Hello, and welcome to Surf All Day A1A, my surfing channel. And this is episode three of How to Surf Florida Waves. It's a very important thing to know, which is the quick surf. Check out my video on my cool beach cruiser today. I don't even have enough time to ride that. That'll put another 10 minutes in my that'll put another 10 minutes in my experience. Today I'm just going to grab the softy, pull it out of the board rack, go down there and go for a surf. Now this is a high tide situation. It's about to shift winds to onshore. I've got a little sliver half hour. This is a very common scenario in Florida. Maybe the reason you have a small amount of time as it's the only part of the day that's going to be any good but the ability to quickly do the strike mission let's demonstrate okay what do we have here what do we have well that's about right you see here's the thing when you have a soft top longboard waves like these little crumblers on the shore you can catch and have a lot of fun I'm actually going to look at see if there's any sandbars up and down the beach that look appealing but I'm likely just gonna go right out here I, I don't want to devote any more than about 30 seconds to the decision oh, look at that you know that is soft top glory right there look at that down the line and you might think that's not rideable it's completely rideable with the right board especially this is the kind of day that the actually the soft top longboard excels and is exactly made for yeah, how to get stoked about that wave? I'm feeling it right now, and the way is by just jumping on it. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the board, set the camera up under the towel, and uh, show you what I mean. So let's check out the setup we got here. Flops, towel, hat, and the hat is used to store the keys. I challenge you to simplify your setup all the way down to that. Now all I have is just board shorts, skinning it, and this board, no leash. Now I'm just trying to, geez, this is the problem. You gotta avoid the trap here of overwatching it. I'm gonna put the camera about at this angle and see if I can't get a few of those little nugs right there. Ah, see the little corner on that left there and on the right? I'm telling you, okay. A little bit of advice here. Run towards the things you love. Trot slowly away from the things you don't. You can see here, I'm just taking a moment to ponder this half foot crumbler coming in right in front of me. And I can see the left and I can see the right. And a bit hard to see from this camera angle, but that is right on the shore. I actually didn't put the camera down closer because I was a little concerned with the high tide that there might be a wave that would wash up and destroy the camera. So I put it at this spot. Now, as you can see, not many set waves. Not many set waves at all. And just enough of a wave to break, but really breaking mostly close to the shore. But one of the things you can do with the longboard is paddle a little bit farther out. And one of the things you can do with the soft top longboard is paddle much farther out. In other words, catch the wave as far out as possible, even before it breaks. Now, a longboard surfboard like this, a soft top, is a freak show. The board I'm surfing there has to be three inches thick and so wide I cannot put it under my arm to carry it using the middle of the board. Now I can towards the back, but the thing is a barge. Now look at this little crumbler coming in. You can see decided not to take it. Could have, but at that point really right in the sand. So really the first couple of waves, just getting a feeling for 
where they're breaking, where I need to set up. I see a little bump coming on the horizon here, and this relates to the first episode in the How to Surf Florida Waves, which is position. First step. Second step, pop. Try to drive for speed and go for the maneuver. <laughs> As you can see where I got off that wave, it was about half a foot deep. Now the better move would have been to be patient and wait for the wave that was coming on the outside that I'm now duck diving. But this brings me to the next step in the quick surf, which is keep moving the whole time. Catch as many waves as you can. You see that just got one on the board for me. So that's two waves now. When I surf on days like this, I try to move quickly back out because often there'll be periods of sets and then long lulls. So the ability to get right back out there is important. And one of the great things about a day like today is the paddle is very manageable. <laughs> you can see on the outside, another wave coming in and you really never know when that one rogue wave will come in and give you what you're looking for. You know, it's a big ocean and there can be waves traveling from thousand miles away that reach you on the one moment that you're out there. So never assume you know what the conditions are. There are always rogue waves. Look at this little rogue wave. See that? Is there even a size description for that size wave? Do you see the speed on the inside? Where I fell off, I basically was on the dry sand. And it's at this point I'm wondering, am I still in the camera angle? Ran up to adjust. And back out again. That camera angle adjustment cost me a nice right. That's me realizing I just missed the best wave I saw so far. Which motivated me to run quickly back in. Now I kept the entire video so you would see every moment of this little surf session and it equaled up to be about 20 minutes long, a little less than 20 minutes. But as you look at this, you can see that there really wasn't that much of a gap in waves. See this little line? It actually kind of walled up on the inside, believe it or not. And I did the old flip the board over so it lands on its back maneuver. But with the softy, you really don't even have to worry about the fins. I actually have uh, soft fins in there, but you can use regular FCS fins. If you want to get a little bit more hold, I kind of like the wiggliness of it. At this point in episode three of How to Surf Florida Waves, I'd just like to say if you're not subscribed to Surf All Day A1A, please do so. And also turn on all notifications, that way you'll be notified as new videos come out. I'm planning on doing an unknown number of additional episodes, but probably get up to about 20 at least. And this is episode three. Okay, let's get right back to the video. The soft top longboard like the one I'm surfing in this video is really the soul food of surfing. And what I mean by that is it allows you to utilize parts of the wave and even waves that would usually not be ridden, not even be considered to be ridden. And as it turns out, they can end up being some of the most delicious parts of the surfing experience. Look at this little set coming out of nowhere. I actually should have been a little bit further out on this wave. Recently, soft top surfboards have become much more popular due to the excellent work of Jamie O'Brien and uh, also Ben Gravy, who both clearly understand 
the deeper implications of soft top surfing. The novelty that you can enjoy on a soft top, everything from seeing Jamie O'Brien surf gigantic pipeline on one to uh, Ben Gravy surfing standing river waves or tiny little refracto surf inside a bay in New Jersey. It is these little novelties and moments in surfing that really after a long time of surfing and becoming somewhat jaded to the experience reignite the passion in the experience itself. It's like there is a whole area of the picture that was right there in front of you the whole time, but you never saw it. And one of the weirdest feelings in surfing one of these longboards on waves like this is that when that board hits the part of the wave where it interacts with the sudden sandbar, that board accelerates so fast. Some of the days I surf this, it's almost really like kind of holding on as it blasts off. Now that wave was just a close out and I, well, I had to catch it because I could see there's no other waves coming behind it. Now you'll notice in this sped up version of what happened next, there is a small wave that approaches. However, I did fail to get far enough out being on the inside. I got caught in that place where I didn't have enough momentum. And what I'm about to show you here is something everyone should do even during a quick surf. And that is to get off the board, swim down, get a handful of sand, come back to the top and lay on your back. What a feeling. There's more to surfing than surfing. Now, if you watched this surf session this far, I want to tell you, go ahead and put down in the comments how many waves you think I caught during this session. If you look at this particular shot, you can see exactly how flat it can look. This is a good example of why we avoid over-checking it. Because you never know what's coming in. Of course, as the time passes in this accelerated portion of the video, not many sets coming in, just waiting. This is a good time to reposition and try to get that little wedge. And I thought that's what was going to happen here, but it's another sandblaster barrel. Now, I did actually have a set come in. You can see these three ladies are walking at the exact same time. <laughs> but look at the little wall. Look at the little left-hand wall that opens up on this wave. Now, that thing is... R <laughs> it's exciting because you are right on the beach. You see where that white water is? That is almost dry sand, and you can still catch it for the very exciting bail opportunity which is a belly flop bail sometimes you get a scrape or two across your stomach but you always get bonus points from whoever's watching you from the beach that's the other thing fun to watch somebody surf a soft top close to the beach and you can see I'm positioning here positioning there looking for peaks trying to be aware and here it comes the wave that I have been waiting for well or at least the wave that I've been given you can see how weak that wave is once again looking for the left hand opportunity hoping Once you hit that most critical section right on the beach, again, it's exciting every time. Back in, and I know this is my final wave of the session, illustrating the art of the quick surf. Keeping in mind that most of what is involved in a quick surf is 
more or less a mental exercise. And I can tell you this kind of surfing is also a great workout. Now here it is. The wave of the day. I positioned myself far enough out, went farther out than I thought it was going to break. And do we actually see the wave begin to feather? Took the whitewater takeoff, looked like we had a, a wall in front of us, and you can see it hardly even takes paddling to catch these waves on this board. We're able to do a classic longboard style turn, dial it back into the pocket. to the inside for the old lean back Larry directly onto the sand. And no worries about that board just eating the beach. It ate the beach many times in this session. And that was the end of my quick surf. Okay, so that was a really fun surf. I'm not sure how many waves I got but it was enough. Got to get back to it now. Pick up my stuff. It. So it was slippery, but you know, it doesn't even matter. The little bit of wax that was on there was enough. It almost makes it a weird challenge to uh, be on that big stable surface on these waves. So hey, if you like videos like this, please subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you have a board like that, you really, there's almost no day that isn't going to be made super fun. I just got a nice little workout, caught a bunch of little waves. One nice set actually came out through the back there at one point, but anyhow, what a delicious wave meal. Waiting for the next. Thanks for watching Surf All Day A1A. Go get it.